Charizard, arguably one of the most iconic Pokemon that's not counting Pikachu in the Pokemon franchise, and one of Ash's greatest Pokemon to date in his team. But even though Charizard is arguably one of his best Pokemon he's also had, is also considered one of the worst Pokemon he has ever had. Now, I don't mean worse as in how powerful or how strong he is, but if you remember when Ash Charmeleon grew up to become a Charizard, he was almost impossible to train anymore. Charizard did not want to obey Ash's order anymore, and would only battle when he, he wants to battle. This caused a strain in Ash and Charizard's relationship, to the point where Ash seemed like Charizard was an untrainable Pokemon. For instance, in the battle between Ash and Richie in the Indigo League, it is without a doubt that Charizard would have swept everybody in Richie's team. But in the beginning, I think Ash was always hesitant in sending out Charizard because he had a feeling and he knew that Charizard would not listen to him. And in the beginning when Ash did send out Charizard, he asked, Charizard actually did, did, did do his job. He battled for Ash and he pretty much bodied everybody until he had to fight Richie's Pikachu. Charizard didn't want to battle. He was lazy and fell asleep mid-battle against the fight with Pikachu. And that, and Ash always begged him to just finish this battle one more time because this was obviously in the Indigo League. You know, you, you can't have your, your Pokemon just sleep on you in the middle of battle. But obviously, as we know Charizard during that time, he never he refused to listen to Ash. And this caused Ash to be disqualified from the Indigo League, making Richie the winner going to the next round. Now, I, if you remember, this was very sad because and caused Ash to be in a very bad mood for a while due to his loss against Richie. And I and after a period of time thinking and reflecting from you know Professor Oak, Misty talking about how you should have trained Charizard better, he decided that he could no longer train Charizard anymore. At least train him to become a strong Pokemon in a way. If all he wanted to do was to battle on his own schedule, Ash felt like he could have never trained him because they he would never would have listened. So this left Ash to, to come to come to the decision that the best thing to do for Charizard was to leave him at Charizard Valley, where he could be properly trained and trained in a way that Ash never knew how. Also, at Charizard Valley. This was the place where Ash Charizard found out that he met his match. When entering Charizard Valley, we see that there that he was literally probably the smallest Charizard out of all of them. And I think he would always want to pick fights, but always end up losing and get tossed in the water. And that caused Charizard to be fired up and want to train and become stronger. Because for a while in the series, Charizard felt like he was the most powerful and no one could give him a challenge. I mean, if you remember, he literally fought a legendary Entei. But once, but you know, once he made it to Charizard Valley, that perspective of his began to change, and he realized he was arguably one of the weakest, if not the weakest, Charizard when entering Charizard Valley. So he he decided he wanted to spend more time here, and Ash noticed that, and he realized how much Charizard enjoyed his time at Charizard Valley, and believed that him being here and being trained by Lisa, the person that runs Charizard Valley, would have been more beneficial. And making him stronger than Ash knew he could ever could. Now, we had a, we even had a scene in where Ash had literally talked bad about his Charizard, talking about in a way who needs a Charizard who was only weak and doesn't obey him. And obviously, you know, Charizard was very surprised, but we knew that Ash never meant any of these words. I guess if we look at it now, I guess that was his only way of finally letting go of his Charizard. Now remember, this this was the Pokemon that he had cared, nurtured, and essentially raised since he was a Charmander. A Charmander that he found abandoned on, on the top of a hill by his previous trainer, Damien, where Ash took him under his guidance. Ash had watched Charmander grow since the very beginning, from a Charmander to a Charmeleon, to finally now the Charizard he is. But it was also very hard for him to let go of Charizard, and have someone else train him because they have been through so much together and to think that you have to let he has to let go of his charizard because he did not feel like he was a suited trainer for him was very heartbreaking and we know we had a scene where ash lily kind of cheered up as he was like running away 
from Charizard because he knew if he were to look back that he could not have a Charizard girl. But he, but he knew he had to because, like, like as I said before, he could really not train Charizard. He wasn't the best suited trainer for Charizard, and he knew that leaving him at Charizard Valley was the only way that he would ever get stronger. And eventually, he did get. And you know, eventually, he did get stronger. He, when Ash ever called back Charizard. He was all, a lot more stronger, a little bit, a lot more obedient than he was when Ash training him, and in, it was a good move in the end, you know. And I think that was probably the most hard. I think that was always the most heartbreaking one for Charizard, where he was always the hardest Pokemon that Ash had ever trained, because I think he was the only Pokemon where Ash had to like give up, because there was literally no other methods that Ash knew how to train Charizard. He tried to be. He tried to train Charizard as how he trained others Pokemon, but he just did not want to obey. And arguably, if he was, I guess in a way, if he were to be trained more properly and a lot better, he probably could have gone down as probably Ash's best Pokemon ever in his team. I don't really know which one, but we know that Charizard could have been more stronger than what he is now. And obviously, we know it's true that Charizard has some honorable feats in his time when he was actually balanced. He defeated great Pokemon, like I said before. But like, I think the amount of like what he what he didn't do really outweighed how much he. Um, I guess in a way, outweighed how much he did do. Yes, he did defeat the legendaries like Articuno. I guess Entei. He did battle uh, like like Brandon's Reggies and all those. But like, honestly, he just felt Archer felt like he could have been so much more special if he was more obedient and if he actually listened and not try to become like. This personified where he thinks he was the strongest Ash team, where he was the like strongest Ash team, where he can literally probably destroy everybody. Which, in arguably, in the sense, in the beginning when we first saw Char Charizard become who he was, he arguably probably was the strongest in Ash's team. But you know, later on, Ash Char Ash's Charizard literally did get humbled. He got destroyed by many Pokemon, and they, and he learned that. And I guess hope I think he learned that he knew he's just not as strong as he thought he was and that he needed to become stronger and he and he couldn't just like pretty much bodied everybody it was that probably the opposite he, he was the one getting bodied um in many scenarios you know and, and th i guess that's one of the reasons why ash also took him ash also knew he couldn't train him because he like he, he all charlie always has a persona where he's always the strongest in the team he's probably he always sees everything he battles he always sees himself as a strong so no matter what his Pokemon opponent was he knew that he always had to he always was the best and he would always win and I guess sometimes Ash realized like that arrogance was also Charizard's downside when he became a Charizard because he, he was never this arrogant when he was a, I guess a Charmander and I guess in some ways a Charmeleon you know and he I guess he had he, he Ash thought he didn't have the experience or the training methods proper enough in order to help Charizard get rid of that arrogance of his so, alright, so I think that's pretty much it for the video. I know it was very short, but I don't think there was need to go anything deeper. I mean, I know I could have gone deeper into details on Charizard once he got out of Pacific, Charizard Valley, but where he comes out to train, to fight for Ash, you know, like the Articuno against, like, um, Brand and all that. But, uh, I think, because at this point, Ash literally didn't train Charizard anymore it, because he left it at Charizard Valley for Lisa to train. So it was really not under his wing anymore. So, I'm just pretty much going up to that point where he left Charles left him at Charles Valley. Yeah, but um, maybe you guys have any other thoughts or other opinions on what you think the hardest Pokemon was to train? Please leave it down in the comments below. And it doesn't have to be like Ash Pokemon. It could be somebody else. It could be a like Paul's Pokemon or, you know, Brock's Pokemon. I doubt that. But like, if you have any other suggestions on what Pokemon you think was the hardest to train, please leave it down in the comments below. And I'll get you guys back when I can. Yeah, take care.